Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Moments with Truth, which is a television outreach of the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We sincerely pray that you will be blessed as you view today's program. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we come into thy presence with thanksgiving and praise for this another day of thy grace. Thank thee for thy goodness to us. Thank thee for thy loving kindness and thy tender mercies. We thank thee for thy great love which thou hast loved us. And for the many blessings that thou hast bestowed upon us. Even the blessing of salvation. For this we give thee thanks. Thank thee for Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have salvation. And we thank thee, O God, that he died the death of a sinner that we can have life and have it more abundantly. It is our desire to share the good news of salvation to others. And even those who have known the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, that they may be strengthened in the inner man. For we are to, be, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And we pray, O oh God, as we use this medium in order to share thy word, we ask thy blessing, we ask thy Holy Spirit leading through Jesus Christ, O Lord. All the praise and the honor be. Amen. We'll read from the book of Romans, the epistle to the Romans, and chapter 12. We read from verse 17 to 21. Romans 12, 17 to 21. Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide all things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, live peaceably with as much as it light you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Or if he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And the Lord will be pleased to bless the reading of his precious word for his dear name's sake. Today we live in a world where people love to take vengeance. They love to avenge themselves. And I always recall a gentleman who said that someone stole from him and his wife was telling him, pray, pray to the Lord. But he said that God is taking too long. So he went to an Obi man in order to get quick results. He wanted to avenge the person who stole from him. And so it is we do not exercise patience and know what it is to wait upon the Lord. The Lord said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And here the Apostle Paul, as he wrote to the Romans, he said, recompense to no man evil for evil. In fact, 
don't try to fight fire with fire. At the end it says, overcome evil with God. There are those who will try to, or will do us evil. Of course it affects us. And you know, sometimes we sing, take it to the Lord in prayer, and which we fail to do. We want to avenge ourselves. Today, as you listen to the many crimes that are committed, especially homicide, it is said that it is a revenge killing. Man wants to take revenge. But my dear friends, the Apostle Paul, even as he, he wrote to the, the, the saints of Thessalonians, Thessalonica, and as we look to chapter 5 and verse 15, again he emphasized the point as he said, See that none render evil for evil unto any man. See that none render evil for evil to any man. And when we consider how man thinks, the flesh will lead us to avenge ourselves. But my dear friends, the Lord said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. It's a recompense no man evil for evil. In verse 19 it says, in Romans 12, 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And we should rest upon God's word. We should believe God. God said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And I want us to look at uh, the example of David and Saul. Saul was his enemy. Saul hated David. Saul envied David. And we find this in 1 Samuel and chapter 18. 1 Samuel and chapter 18. And this is because David slew Goliath. And as a consequence, the army of the Philistines were slain. The woman rejoiced. That's the, the woman in Israel. They rejoiced. And they sang and they danced. And they said, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. And because of this, we read in 1 Samuel and chapter 18 and verse 9. And Saul eyed David from that day forward. Saul I David, he watched him with an envy eye. All because the woman ascribed to David ten thousands, and they ascribed to me, he said, thousands. Jealousy kills. And sometimes people get at you, people do you evil. People commit many crimes because of envy and jealousy. You know, we often sing with the Sunday school children, root them up and throw them behind. Four little foxes that all spoils the vine. Envy, jealousy, malice, and pride. They shall never in my heart abide. Envy, jealousy, malice, and pride. These are four things that causes a lot of crime today. It brings about a lot of injustice. And people will do you evil 
because of jealousy. They exercise malice because they envy you. So here we see that Saul I David from that day forward. And we see Saul started to attack David. He wanted to kill David. He wanted Dave to exterminate David as it were. But we see that the Lord delivered David out of the hand of Saul. Saul tried to slay him with a javelin twice. And the Lord protected him. And we read in verse 12. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. The Lord departed from Saul. And Saul recognized that the Lord was with David. And David, he didn't try to avenge himself. But you read that he behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And the Lord was with him. But Saul continued his attacks on David. So he wanted to give David his daughter to marriage in order to get him slain, in order for David to fall into the hands of the Philistines and be killed. We hear him say in verse 17, Saul said, let not my hand be on him that is on David and let the hand of the Philistines be upon him he wanted the Philistines to kill David but the Lord protected him and Saul continued his way of attacking David but yet we see that there were times that David fled from him and Jonathan, Saul's son, he loved David. He loved David very much. And he protected David from Saul at times because he was there when Saul made his plans and deriving his strategies in order to kill David. And he was able to tell David the plans of his father. And several times we see Saul try to attack David, try to kill David, planning his strategies. But the Lord God, the God in whom David trust, for when he went up against Goliath, he trusted in God. He believed that his God, who delivered him from the lion and the bear, was able to deliver him from Goliath. So when he faced Goliath, he came in the name of, his, of the Lord of hosts. He believed in his God. And my dear fellow friends, believe in God. Trust in God. David didn't rely on any strength of his own. We cannot rely on our strength for we are weak in the flesh. But we need the grace of God, the spiritual empowerment from God in order to overcome evil with God. In ourselves, in our flesh, we will fail. For even our thoughts are evil. God knows our thoughts. God knows our hearts. But in order for us to carry out the mandate that was given to us in God's word, we need the grace of God, the power of God. And here we see that David, though he was attacked by Saul, 
Saul used even his daughters in order to have David killed. And we see that he used even Michal, his daughter. And when they went to the house to kill David, David was not there. Because Michal, she let him out of the house with a cord. She put, as it were, a mannequin on the bed. And when they came, when they thought it was David, David escaped. The Lord protected David many times. And David was in despair. Humanly, at times, we wonder, what have we done to people? What have we done even to close friends of ours, relatives, or co-workers, whoever they may be, for them to hate us to such an extent? We feel the persecution. Sometimes we feel the hatred and we fear that they will conquer us. And this happened to David, for we read in chapter 20 and verse 1. And David fled from Neath in Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh his life? This happened to us so many times that we wonder why. Let us remember our oh master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, he was hated. He was despised and forsaken. He was hated by men. What evil had he done even in his trial? The question was asked. What evil hath he done? There was none. But yet they said, crucify him. Crucify him. We see that David had the opportunity to revenge himself. For Saul was delivered into his hand. David and his men, they were tired. They went into a cave because they were in the mountains. And they went into a cave in Engedi. And while there, Saul and his men came into the cave as well. Naturally, David, fighter will say, fighters will say, and as they said, the Lord has delivered thine enemy into thy hand. But yet, what David did, he just cut off just a piece of the skirt of Saul's robe. But yet his heart smote him. He did not kill Saul. He did not want to avenge himself. For he said, I will not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. David pity Saul. And you know, we are to love our enemies. We are to love our enemies. Though they may forsake us, they may persecute us, they may reproach us, they may do us all kinds of evil. But even as the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Beatitudes, he said that we should love our enemies. We should pray for our enemies. We should give to them. We should lend to them in Matthew 6. Let us not avenge ourselves of our enemies. And perhaps we will look at Matthew's gospel and, and chapter 4 to read what the Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples. Matthew 4 and or rather Matthew chapter 6 
And as we look at uh, there, we see that God is saying, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to his disciples that you should love your enemies. Matthew 5 and verse 44, it said, But I say unto you, Matthew 5, 44, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send rain on the just and the unjust. Here he's saying, love your enemies. It is rather difficult, humanly speaking, and in the flesh, to love our enemies. But this is the command given by our master. And when we look at the example, or blessed example, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, and consider yourself, when I consider myself, what a great love that he has loved us. We were his enemies. Romans 5 and 12 and onwards we read that God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were rebellious to him, Christ died for us. We didn't love him. We rebelled against him. We did all manner of evil against him for we sinned against him. We didn't want God, but yet he loved us. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ himself said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So loved the world. And as John said, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we can be called the sons of God. We who were in such a rebellious state, we who were separated from him, we who were in enmity with him, yet he loved us and he gave his son to die for us. And the Lord Jesus Christ loved us. For he said, Greater love hath no man than this, for a man laid down his life for his friends. He called us friends we, when we hated him, when we were against him, when we were going away from him, when we committed so many sins. Yet, he called us friends. He embraced us. He came that we could be reconciled to God through his death on the cross. That once more we can have that union with God. We can have fellowship with God. And thank God for all those who put faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who have received him as their true and personal savior. Who have received the Lord Jesus Christ into their heart can now have that fellowship with him. We now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are reconciled to him. What about your enemies? He said, recompense no man evil for evil. But we should, in verse 21 he said, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with God. And there we see that David, he did not exercise evil against Saul, but he overcome evil with good. And as he overcome evil with good, the guilt of Saul, he said to David, thou art more righteous than I. For he realized that if a man meet his enemy and had the opportunity that David had, he would have been killed. If Saul had that opportunity against David, he would have killed David. And David had the opportunity, but he did not exercise it against Saul. 
And so we as the people of God should not exercise vengeance against our enemies. We should not look for opportunities to get, uh, to get at our enemies, but let us overcome evil with good. May the Lord help us that as we look at what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us, how God has loved us and has delivered us, has saved us, though we were in a sinful condition, though we rebelled against him, though we were in enmity against him, let us remember that we should love our enemies. Avenge not ourselves. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. And may the Lord give us the grace that we may be able to exercise such love to our enemies for his dear name's sake. Amen. Thank you for viewing today's program. We invite you to contact us at any of the media advertised or visit us at any of the meetings that appear on the screen. Dear friends, remember that Jesus saves, he keeps, and he satisfies. May God bless you.